Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you today. Yes, I know it is uh, about two o'clock in the afternoon, but I was referring to the time when you wake up. And today I want to share with you about a subject that is one of those hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil topics that a lot of people just want to kind of hit the snooze button on. But before I go there, I want to ask you this question. How many of you are labeled hard-headed as children? Come on, raise your hands. How about, a, yeah, your teenagers. Maybe this morning your spouse told you, don't be so hard-headed, honey. Yeah, well, I'm looking for a few hard-headed individuals who will hear what I have to say today, who will see what's going on around us, and who will not be afraid to speak. So let's get started. Tanya was walking home from school one day when she met a new and interesting friend. He rolled his window down and said, man, how pretty you are. And he began to pay her compliments and smiled at her. It made her laugh. She felt so great about that. For the next six months, he would stop by every day after school and they would talk and laugh and he would bring her gifts. Well, Tanya was only 12. She was an honor student, talented, very pretty, all-American girl type. You see, during this time, he's been crafting an illusion of loyalty and trust. And after about six months, she decides that it's okay to get in the car with him. And when she does, and she closes the door, her life is changed forever. You see, Tanya's boyfriend has now become her pimp. And he must remove her far away from what is familiar, strip her of her identity, abuse her, And for the next five years, he will prostitute her to over 100 men a month. Tanya is left without hope because every morning when she wakes up, she hears his voice ringing in her head. You will never get away from me. I know where I found you and I know where I can find you again. Don't even think of running. Tanya is arrested 17 times in 17 states labeled a child prostitute and charged for the crimes that were committed against her. What would you say and how would you feel if I told you that there were more slaves in the world today than ever before in our history? Tim, what are you talking about? Abraham Lincoln did away with slavery back in the 1800s. We don't have slaves in America anymore. Well, I want to tell you, slavery still exists. According to the Polaris Project organization, every 15 seconds, a human is being sold into slavery worldwide. And in the short amount of time that I've taken to tell you this story about Tanya, 12 to 15 lives have been victimized and sold into human slavery. Today, I want to talk with you about this very subject. I'm looking for people who will hear what I'm saying and see what's going on around us and speak out against a form of modern-day slavery otherwise known as human trafficking. So what is human trafficking? Human trafficking is the use of force, fraud, and coercion to rob a person of their freedoms through exploitation for profit. You see, this is an ever-growing industry. Ten years ago, I started an organization called Legacy of Hope International and developed a non-government organization in Southeast Asia working in this area of human slavery and trafficking. I use information and education to be able to share with people like you to uh, tell them about one of the fastest growing organized crimes in the world, human trafficking. And so when we look at human trafficking, there are many faces of this industry. And I'm going to be telling you about a few of those faces today and and, and what this whole thing kind of looks like. But I've given you a little glimpse already. You see, human trafficking is spreading like crazy. At any point in time, you can turn on your TV or your radio and you can hear about the rise and the falls of manufacturing output or the GDP But I want to tell you today about an industry that's so prosperous, that is growing so fast, that is inhumane and horrific. And today it is quickly surpassing the drug trade at 32 plus billion dollars a year. Contrary to what you may think or believe, human trafficking is no longer a third world issue. 
It's not encapsulated in smaller countries that we don't hear of much, much, much like we used to maybe in the past, but you know, it's crossing every socioeconomic group. It's in our poorest neighborhoods to our most elite, and it's in our own backyards. So today, let me share with you a little bit about what human trafficking looks like. You've all heard this song, Tina Turner saying, what's love got to do, got to do with it, right? Well, for the Romeo trafficker, love has nothing to do with it. You see, he's convincing this poor child or this girl or his victim that he loves them. He's creating this illusion of trust with them. He's using calculated uh, methods to be able to gain her loyalty and her trust, all the while he's planning her exploitation. You see, he will assess her home life, her social networks, all the places that she goes. And that is one thing that we have to be very careful with when it comes to our posting in social networking. How many of you have seen somebody post something, oh, I'm at this restaurant eating, or, and a little map comes up? Traffickers are watching these things. He gathers all this information from his victim, only to then turn around and manipulate this victim by telling her what she needs, what she wants to hear, giving her what she needs. If she needs love, then he'll become the boyfriend. If she needs a friend, he'll become the best friend forever. If she doesn't have a place to stay, he'll provide a shelter for her. This is our Romeo. He'll promise education and employment and a better life, maybe through marriage. And as she begins to really come into a place of of trust with him, he will up the ante and demand more, pressuring her to do more for him. And if she doesn't comply, he'll use emotional abuse against her and blame her for it. And then he may draw her into a sexual relationship where through this combination of satisfying her needs will establish a foundation for her to be able, for him to be able to control her psychologically in the future. So this, this cycle continues on and on until that trust and development is there. And if she does not comply, if she is still resistant, he will beat her, he will lock her up, he will starve her, maybe have her gang raped and force her to use drugs until she becomes compliant. This is the face of our Romeo. Now let me tell you about the scout. You may, have, uh, you may have seen pictures of a scout before, but this is what our scouts look like. I'm gonna give you a scenario. Two American girls end up going to Costa Rica for their spring break. They get through baggage claim at San Jose International Airport and out to the sidewalk they go to find a cab when they're inundated by so many Latin-speaking or Spanish-speaking uh, men that are trying to earn a dollar for the day or a peso for the day. They can't really understand what's going on and they're a little bit overwhelmed, but there's this good looking guy down the sidewalk who's watching and he takes note and he comes over and he says, hello, my name is uh, Romeo Gonzalez, how can I help you? And the girls are just like, oh my gosh, you speak English. And they find somebody that they can relate to. And so he flags a cab, the cab comes over, they get in, they head to the hotel. In the meantime, while he's putting the luggage in, He's handing them two tickets to a a local art gallery. For that evening, there's going to be a grand celebration of one of Costa Rica's top artists, and he's inviting them to be their guest. So they're in their hotel room, unpacking their bags, just giggling, excited about being on vacation, and a knock comes on the door. Room service. They open the door, and they're overtaken by two men. They're drug out of their hotel room, and they're gone forever, lost in this industry called human trafficking. This is the face of the scout and the gorilla. They use brute force. They're usually in cahoots with each other. So now I've given you some information about human trafficking and some statistics about what's going on, uh, both nationally and and, and around the world. And I want to give you uh, a little thought here. Information plus application equals transformation. And I'll just hold that in your thoughts for a minute because I've given you some information I want to tell you about where we are in South Carolina and how human trafficking is relating to us in our states and in our communities. South Carolina is a destination and source location for human traffickers. We are also a pass-through state. 
in 2011, the Polaris Project organization did a rating or a survey on all 50 states on the laws that are critical to the formation of the framework of combating human trafficking. And South Carolina landed in the top dirty dozen for negligible laws in convicting traffickers and buyers and providing services for victims. That's not good. Prior to 2012, South Carolina had really had no laws against human trafficking whatsoever. But in 2011, and I think because of, as a result of this particular uh, survey that the Polaris Project Group had done, many organizations around our state and private groups came together to meet at the Capitol and lobby our legislators to create laws that would combat human trafficking here in our state. You see, because South Carolina has such a rural nature, we've got coastal waterways and our coastlines, we've got the I-95 corridor connecting Miami all the way up to New York, we've got the I-85 interstate and 26 interstates, and traffickers are just, you know, they can move their victims around with ease. But we're making it more tough now because as of June 2012, our House and Senate passed Bill 3757, providing necessary laws for us to deal with human trafficking in our state. So that's a positive for us. However, we are still lagging in three areas. And I'm going to tell you about those in just a moment. Human trafficking was not, be, was not meant to fight alone. I can't do it by myself. You can't do it by yourself. And we know that as we can join arms and join hands and really hear and see what's going on around us in this industry, we can stand up and pool our resources and um, make a difference and stand up for justice in this area in our state. And as we do so, I think we can make a huge impact. But I'm telling you today that if every one of you will join with me in this one application, I think we can see these three things worked out this year within our state that would meet the full criteria for what the laws require uh, to, to combat human trafficking here in South Carolina. So here they are. And if you will, take out your pencil. I want you to write these down on your pen, on your pad. Because again, I, I believe that if you will do this, we can all work together. We'll see these three things finalized and put into action, and we can move forward from here. Here's number one. South Carolina needs a human trafficking hotline. The National Resource Center or the National Human Trafficking Resource Center has a hotline number that in other states has already been established and placed in strategic businesses and locations around their states. We do not have a hotline number established in South Carolina. Truck stops are a number one location for trafficking victims to be passed through. And if we can have hotline numbers where these victims could potentially see a number where they could call for help, we could possibly help someone. So ask your senator or your, your legislators to please provide a human trafficking hotline. The second thing you can do is ask them to provide laws for safe harbor protection for traffic victims. These are underaged victims who have been sex trafficked. They don't deserve prosecution. Much like Tanya, who was charged for all the crimes, there are many young people who are below age who are being forced into human trafficking and they um, really have no reason to be prosecuted. So what it does is it excludes them from the prosecution process and helps put them into uh, child welfare, welfare services or places where they can receive real help and rehabilitation. The U.S. Department of Justice reveals that a pimp will sell an underage girl for $400 an hour. 10 to 15 times a day, six days a week, with an average between 9,000 and 14,000 sexual contacts within which she receives no help, no nothing, except hurt and pain. How can any 12-year-old child live under that kind of circumstance and then be charged for a crime that they didn't commit? The third thing that I need your help with is asking our senators and, and, and our legislators to vacate convictions for trafficked victims. An underaged person who has, pro, who has been involved in human trafficking and forced into prostitution, 
does not deserve to have a criminal record. We ask that they would vacate those criminal charges from their, from their record so that they can pursue their lives and through re rehabilitation and move forward from there. So that's how you can help me. And I believe together that we can make a difference. If you will call them, call your senators, call your legislators here at the state house this week, next week, or sometime in the near future and tell them, ask them, please do these things. And then we will meet 100% the criteria set forth by the experts who look at human trafficking and the laws that are developed around our nation and across our country to help us combat this particular industry. So as I've laid out a realistic appraisal in this quick, quick amount of time on such a huge topic, I'd like to ask you this. Will you hear the cries of those that have no voice? Will you see the injustice that's being done and stand with others to say enough is enough? And will you, will you stand up as a hard-headed abolitionist and become a modern-day hero and speak out and speak up for those who have no voice to speak for themselves? You see, if we don't speak up, our silence is consent. I'm going to leave you with this today. Edmund Burke once quoted, he said this, and I will quote him. The only thing necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. I believe that we can do this together for our state. Thank you so much for your time today. You've been a great audience. Have a great day.